Uh, what are the names of, of your books? So you've written a whole well, bunch. Well, most important is Zionism in the Age of the Dictators. That got wonderful reviews from the London Times and Moscow's Vestia and so on. That's the official S strange one. bedfellows. Well, they they both said the same thing. Hey. We didn't know about this stuff until we read the book. All right, what was the next book? Uh, then The Iron Wall, Zionist Revisionism from Jabotinsky to Shamir. Uh, and uh, then I, I wrote uh, Jews in America Today, which got, are you ready for this, a rave review from the Jerusalem Post. Okay? I, I think they ultimately fired the guy who wrote the review, but they, hey, I, I, I don't think it was over me, you know. But, and then uh, my last book that I authored was The Lesser Evil, which is a history of the Democratic Party, which I call The Lesser Evil because I don't know a single full-grown adult who believes in the Democratic Party. You know, they, they vote for it as the lesser evil to the Republicans. So that became the title of my book. And then, uh, more recently, I edited Jefferson and Madison on separation of church and state. And then finally, my last book was uh, 51 Documents Zionist Collaboration with the Nazis. Now, I just finished an article, uh, which will be published shortly in the Journal of Palestine Studies, on a book on... Uh, uh, Arab collaborators with uh, the Zionists, etc. I've written about 130 articles, etc., for different publications uh, all over the world. Uh, the, uh, I wrote three articles for The Nation. Uh, I, uh, I sent an article over the internet, uh, which Final Call, the uh, Farrakhan's newspaper, asked me if they could run it, and I did, etc., and I'm quite proud of that. I mean, you know, it's a very important black paper. I mean, it's read all over the United States. And uh, basically, I see myself as a, a historian, and I would go further. I would say uh, that now another focus of mine uh, is which I, you know, I, I went to prison as a, a, for, for, for marijuana. And how long did you serve? You know, you mentioned you got a one to two. Nine months. Uh, and I got out because I studied law while in prison and was able to show that they had put me in prison because of my political activities during the... They, meaning the University of California, had sent... had the the court sent me to prison for my activities during the Berkeley free speech movement. So I wasn't um, paroled. They gave me a discharge because I, what I did was I sent a habeas corpus into a court while I was in prison. And to beat the habeas corpus, they discharged me. And once you're out, the, the habeas corpus don't work anymore, you know. But, uh, There's more I'd like to get into with Lenny Brenner another time, especially his experiences in Ireland and Lebanon. But I want to say this right now about drug reform. I was down in New York City last week, and there were ads all over the place for Boardwalk Empire, the new HBO series about how prohibition in the 1920s was a boon for organized crime. Everybody knows now that prohibition was stupid, but there's a total disconnect. We have prohibition now, drug prohibition. We've spent tens of billions in a war against drugs, but America's hunger for drugs has never lessened, and we've turned the Mexican border area into a slaughterhouse. But almost no one is saying that we have to get rid of this immensely stupid and futile drug prohibition. That's our program for today. See you next week at this time. I'm Stanley Heller, and this is The Struggle.